Jonathan Buchanan with me. Ooh. And we have Jack. That guy. The smaller Jonathan. The smaller. Uh, the stronger Jonathan. I beat him in a bench press competition. <laughs> Hey, 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 I don't listen to people under six foot, so please be quiet. Nice. Hey, guys, before we jump in to worship tonight, we have a couple of announcements for you guys, just so you know what's going on. Tonight is the last FC. Yay! Woo! Uh, oh. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Anyways. However, 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 we still have some awesome things going on at First Baptist Conroe that we want you to be a part of. And as always, it starts with Sunday mornings at 945 for life groups. Yeah. Oh. Not there so, so if you're. If you're not involved in a life group on Sunday morning, come join us this Sunday. You can jump right in, and it'll be a great time. We're going to actually have parties in our life groups, so it'll be a great time to get to know some of your fellow friends. Can you just party? Do what? It's not a party. It's a get-together. It's a Can gathering. Can you just party? A gathering. Some people got it. Some a fellowship. Some cool. We also have other things going on this summer. Whoa. What was that, Jack? It's a pan in the microphone. I think it sounded like an impact. I think it was an impact. Oh. Impact camp! Impact camp! Hey, impact camp is June 14 through 18. Make sure you get signed up tonight. You can grab a form. with a, It has a little postcard with a QR code. You can sign up online tonight, and you won't want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. I went this last week and checked out the college campus. It's pretty awesome. Guess what? Each room, each dorm room, has its own refrigerator and microwave. What? Hot pockets. Hot pockets. <laughs> With the chicken strips. Ow. <laughs> the other thing we got going on this summer in July is our Jack. Well, you know, you know what it is? It's it's a missing trip. <laughs> a missing trip. It's, it's a, a it's a. Can you be quiet? I'm talking. <laughs> be quiet. It's a mission trip. We got our mission trip to New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. July 18th through 23rd. Make sure you get signed up. There's forms in the back where you can grab one of those. Uh, remember, the application is just the beginning. Make sure you get that filled out and turned into us, and we'll hand you the rest of the paperwork. But by filling that out... You get an opportunity to get a scholarship to help you pay for it. So make sure you get that in right away so you can have it paid for almost. So you, won't, you can go to New Orleans for free on mission for lo the Lord. All right. There's a couple ways you can stay connected with us this summer. It's One is through our Instagram account and social media. So make sure you follow us on Instagram at FC right there. You'll see all kinds of crazy stuff this summer. And also you can get text alerts, text alerts, text alerts. Jack. <laughs> Have you signed up for Remind? The Lord has called me not to do it. So I do not do it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. But if you would like to get text alerts this summer, letting you know what's going on and how you can be a part of it, text at 7FH492, the number 81010, and you will get text alerts about all the cool things we have going on. Hey, just because we don't have FC on Wednesday, this summer we will have some Wednesday activities and we'll have some other crazy awesome events going like on. What? So you won't want to miss it. Like what? Like Actually, what? this week we were planning a pretty epic lock-in to start the next school year. What's that? We're still in school. Yeah, what's that? We're at, we are in school. I'm not, I'm we, have, we have four more weeks of school. Yeah. If your name is Wade Harper, can you please leave? Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, what we want to do for you right here is we're going to have the band come on up because we're about to lead worship. But as they're coming up, we have three of their senior videos to show you right now. So we're going to go ahead and start with that first senior video. Hey, I'm Zachary. I'm a senior at FC and I go to Conroe High School right now and I'm planning to go to Sam Houston to learn to be a teacher. 
Um, one of my favorite memories from FC is the very first mission trip that I went on in seventh grade to New Orleans. And we were just working in a neighborhood with the small little kids. And we were just ministering to them and just trying to have to let them have a good time learning about God. And it was just awesome to see the joy that they had when just hanging out with us and genuine love for people and wanting to learn about God. And one thing that I've learned as I grew up in this ministry is that fellowship is the most important thing when growing your faith and growing the faith of, of the others around you. Because whenever you have fellowship, you can learn from each other and develop a bond. And it just helps you grow faster in your faith. And it just helps you learn more by just conversations with each other and just uh, figuring out like how they do things and you telling them how you do things and you just sharing all of your great moments with God with each other. Hey y'all, my name is Haley Britton and I will be graduating from Conroe High School. I will be attending Texas State University where I will be a strutter, majoring in dance education and minoring in media studies. I would have to say one of my favorite memories is probably my eighth grade year whenever we went on a mission trip. We found this like secret ballroom that we would go to at like three in the morning and we would just stay up all night playing freeze tag and hacky sack. Um, I would have to say one of the biggest things that I've learned is the importance of community. Um, being a believer, it's hard and it's challenging and so when you have something like Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings it's always a good opportunity to recharge and to refocus your heart for the for the next week or for the week that you're currently in and so that's something that I've really cherished throughout my years in high school and that I will continue on for the rest of my adult years. Um, FC has given me a lot of opportunities and a lot of great memories and if you're not a part of FC you should join because it's one of the best things that ever happened to me. So I'm definitely going to miss it. Hey guys, so I'm Jonathan. I'll be graduating from uh, Cold Spring. Most of you probably don't know where that is, so it's west of Willis, about 25 minutes. It's a pretty small school. Uh, I'm going to be continuing my education at SAM, studying political science to become a state trooper. It's not, it's not, it's not directly correlated. The, degree with the career field, but I want a more broad degree. So I, uh, my favorite memory from youth is probably just playing in the band every Wednesday. It's been such a blessing to be able to use my gifts and talents to glorify God. And probably my favorite thing I've learned was something Kayla said, I, don't, I think it was after like it was a reflection of V now, she was saying uh, that she felt, I don't remember how, I don't know where she got it, or she might have said it just herself, but it's like when we were at D-Now worshiping, if we felt the overwhelming presence and love of God, like the music was so great and I felt so close to God, but it shouldn't just be at D-Now. It shouldn't just be on Sunday. It shouldn't just be on Wednesday. Like you should, you should not necessarily feel the Holy Spirit all the time, but you should be close to God in your walk and in your faith every day of the week, not just Sunday and not just Wednesday when you show up to church. So uh, that's, that's my senior video.
is Wade Harper. I go to Covenant Christian School and I'll be graduating May 22nd. I will be attending the University of Mary Harden Baylor to major in business communications and also to play on the football team. And I think my greatest memory of FC was when we went to New Orleans. I think I was in ninth going into 10th grade and all the guys just decided to pile in one bed making this thing we call mega bed. And mega bed lasted and it still is a thing today and it's really fun and it's just a great opportunity to bond with the boys, you know. And uh, I think my greatest lesson that I learned was just to love anyone. It doesn't matter who they are, where they're from, what school they're from, what they dress like. I mean, it's like, as, like what Jesus calls us to do is to love them unconditionally and as we love ourselves and as, as he has loved us. And I think that's the greatest lesson I've ever learned. Thank you. I'm Owen Dwyer. I'm graduating from Conroe High School. I'm going to Texas A&M to major in political science. Like this, memory from the church was going to D now, and I learned that you have to be patient. All right, guys, I have to ask you a question. All right, yeah. who likes dancing? Not me. Yeah. Yeah. Who, yeah. who likes praising Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have this really good idea. Why don't we just take these two hands that we both raised and we combine that praising Jesus and dancing? All right. So this course is awesome, and we are literally going to get so hyped. It's the last Wednesday of the school year. Something that's the last Wednesday. So on the chorus of this song, right here at the front, we're all gonna jump and have fun and just worship. It's gonna be a blast. All right.
out of Jesus.
Hey guys, my name is Lindsay Davenport and I'm graduating from Willis High School this year. Whoop whoop, go Wildcats. And I'm planning on going to UT in the fall to study social work and then eventually law school for crimes against children. Um, my favorite memory from youth is definitely d now from 2020, I want to say. Um, the color war was so fun and we just all got to bond and connect and it was just so great. My favorite memory for sure. And then the best thing I've learned in my spiritual walk is the importance of intentional relationships with others, just for yourself and for other people around you. I never really knew what that was like before I came to church. I didn't have very many intentional relationships, but let me tell you, it changes your life just to know that someone cares about you so much and have others know that you care about them on a deeper level. It just, it's a life, it's a life changer, guys. <laughs> let me tell you. Um, so yeah. I'm really gonna miss you guys. Hey everybody, my name is Tabani Mermon. I will be graduating from Willis High School this year. Um, I will be attending Lone Star this next semester and I'll be pursuing an associate's degree in dental hygiene. I'd say my favorite memory from FC would just be like being able to praise the Lord with everybody around me and the idea of being unified and just being able to pour our hearts out to him and doing it together is really special to me. Um, I'd say a big blessing that I've learned on my journey while pursuing the Lord would be just being able to have a relationship with him and knowing how to do it because before I had no idea how to do it. Before I joined student ministry, I was just kind of lost and didn't really understand how I was supposed to do that. But for that, I'm really thankful. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Sarah Adams. I'll be graduating from Canyon Creek High School. Let's go Creek! My future plans after high school would be going to Lone Star to finish up my basics, then go to St. Thomas University in Conroe to pursue my nursing degree. My favorite FC memory was D now 2019, uh, Mrs. Rosencrantz's house. <laughs> And, you know, I feel like all the girls in that house, we just bonded. No matter, like, what the situation was in our living room, like, we just all talked so long and we just connected in such a good way. I can't be, I, I am forever grateful for that experience. My advice that I would give to FC students for the future and now would be, one, get active please get active. It's so fun and it's so amazing, especially when you work with either little kids or you play an instrument or you're on the SLT team for, you know, the little little activities for <laughs> FC students. Um, and that would be decorating team or the student band. All of that's amazing. And even though high school is sometimes about grades and stress, like sometimes you get in the stressful moments, it's going to be those little things, little activities that you love that's going to help you out of that stress and just help you relax. You know, high school stressful. So enjoy it while you can and relax. <laughs> also, the second point is Have fun. Oh my goodness. Have fun. <laughs> it's going to be so, like I said before, it's going to be, high school's going to be so stressful. It's not all, it's not going to be stressful for long. I promise. As long as you find the people who you love, which is going to be at FC and find the things that you love to do, which would be anywhere else and plus FC. <laughs> so that's me. <laughs> Tonight, hey, before we jump into God's word, uh, Keely texted me this week and, and wanted to just say a few words about our seniors, just because they've meant so much to her. Uh, so before we jump in, I thought I would have her hold it together, Keely. No, but it's, uh, it's very sweet of Keely to, to want to say something, and uh, so I just want to give her the opportunity to do so. So if you just give her your attention for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Hey, guys. Okay. So I typed up a little speech, 
in the middle of my geography class when I was supposed to be listening to my teacher, but I did this instead. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to say something, because all of the seniors, y'all are like, yeah, y'all mean a lot to me. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> okay, to all the seniors. I know this isn't official goodbye yet, because you will be with us until the end of the summer, but since this is our last FC, I thought I would put together a speech to tell you how much y'all have impacted my life and helped me become the person I am in Christ. It's crazy how insanely close I got with some of y'all over these past couple of years I've been part of the student ministry. I have made countless memories with each of y'all that I will cherish forever. Every time I think about y'all not being here next year, it makes me want to cry. I consider y'all to be my older siblings. Y'all have supported me through everything. Y'all have made me laugh until I fell off a of bed. If you know, you know. And you have always been by my side. I will miss band practice with you all and always messing around. Thank you for being great examples of Christ followers. You have shown me, you have shown me how to, oh my gosh, hang on guys. Thank you for being great examples of Christ followers. You have shown me how to be an example to younger students. I thank God every day for putting y'all in my life because each of y'all has made an impact in my life and I appreciate it. I love y'all and I will miss y'all, but I'm excited to see what God has in store for each of you. You better come back and see us. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Keely, for sharing. And I, I know you're not the only student in here that probably feels that same way about our seniors and the impact they've had on this group. So let's go ahead and jump into God's Word. I want to go into Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Be in Joshua chapter one tonight. I, I just wanted to do a quick look at what happens when the power transitions from Moses to Joshua and what God has to say. Because, you know, for me personally, as the student pastor, I know Soto and I have had these talks, and, and Carrie has been a part of these talks as well. We've been asking, okay, what's next? And it, and it kind of how many of y'all have seen the sappy football movies, which doesn't, it seems ironic to say sappy football movies, uh, like Friday Night Lights, yeah? Okay, so, so what, after that last football game, the coaches come into the office and, you know, they're all like, oh, season's over, and then one by one, they begin to take the seniors off the depth chart, which is just the positions, and they start looking at who's next. So tonight I want to kind of do that. So seniors, sorry. Uh, but I, I want to ask the question, what's next for our student ministry? What, what does that look like? How does, how does God move after such an awesome class of seniors graduates? What's, what's going to happen next? And I, I want to key you in on a few things that take place whenever Joshua takes over for Moses that I, I, I think are key to understanding how God works in general. Okay, so Joshua chapter 1, let's look at verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses my, Moses, my servant, is dead. All right, that's it. So here's, here's what you need to know, that Moses didn't just die. Moses has been dead for about 30 days. As customary, they had about a 30-day mourning period where everybody gathered together, they, they cried, they wept together, they they spent time with one another. They reflected on the life of Moses and, and all the things that he had done. I mean, think about all the things that Moses had done for them. Moses helped lead them out of Egypt from the captivity of the Egyptians. 
which included going through the sea, parting the sea. He had led them through the wilderness. And he had led them up to the promised land. Moses had received the law from God and had been the mediator between God and his people. And Moses got to witness God over and over again. He witnessed him in the burning bush. He spoke with him in the tabernacle. He saw him face to face. So we can look back and we can, as as they did, we can look back at our seniors and we can see all the cool things that they've accomplished for our student ministry as well. There's something else we need to know about Moses, though. There's a reason why he didn't go into the promised land. See, the, he had made the same mistake that the others had after they had left Egypt because they failed to trust the Lord and, his, and follow his lead fully. There were moments where they, God called them to do something and they would do the opposite. Think about when Moses goes up to Mount Sinai to receive the law. What happens to the people that he leaves behind? They make a golden cow and they start worshiping it. When they get hungry, they start complaining and asking God, why did, they, why did God just le- bring us out of Egypt where we had food just to kill us in the desert? Forgetting all the things that God had done. See, Moses did the exact same thing at the waters of Mirabah. Instead of speaking to the rock and the water coming forth, Moses decided to trust in himself and his own strength and his own staff. And he hit the rock instead of speaking to it. And because of that lack of trust, he would not get to go into the promised land. He would see it from a distance. God would bring him up on the mountain. He could see it. But he would not be the one to bring Israel in. So like I said, our seniors, they have done some amazing things. I'm so proud of them. I'm so thankful for them. Um, I challenged them about a year ago, about a year ago, and we met together, and I said, I need you guys to help us start something new and start a new culture in our student ministry. We need to turn a page. We need to do something different. And we've seen God move in their lives and through their lives in some great ways. Do you all agree? Y'all seen our seniors lead out? But I'm sure that they would also tell you that they know that they've fallen short in some areas. That they missed out on some opportunities this year. But guess what? God's grace is sufficient, and I know that he's going to continue to work in and through you. Not just here, but wherever you go. That's the promise. But I'm thankful for them. They, they bought into my crazy ideas. They jumped on board. They trusted me when they didn't have to. So, and, and I'm looking forward not only to what God is going to do in their lives in the future when I started getting those, those wedding announcements and all that kind of crazy stuff, but I also look forward to this summer and how they're going to lead out this summer. There's these last few months. But you're dead to me. Okay, so... Uh, Moses was dead. Moses was dead. You guys are leaving, right? So let's look at what happens next. Let's continue in verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. So here's for the rest of you that are left. Here's what we need to know. It's time to move. It's time to move. We can sit here and we can think about the past all we want to, but it's not going to change. So we might as well stand up and get ready to move because the mission continues. So the question is, who is going to get up and go? Who's going to take the place of these seniors? Who will be our next Moses? Our next Joshua. 
And it's here that I want to tell you that they, they talked about joining the SLT, Sarah did. We have forms tonight where you can take those with you and start thinking about how you can serve next year. So I just want to encourage you to think about that. Verse 3 says this, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you just as I promised to Moses. So here's the thing. We must get up and get ready to go, but then we must take action. We must take action. See, he didn't go, Moses is dead, you're in charge, and your enemies are wiped out now. The work's been done. Now it was time to get to work. He says, Where, wherever you place the sole of your foot, that land will become yours as is promised. So here, here's what we must do. We must take that action. We must take that step. We have to go into the world. If we want to see this ministry continue to grow, if we want to see the gospel transform the lives of our friends, then we must walk with Christ, we must share the gospel, and we must love people. We have to go out and do these things if we want to be a part of what God's doing. That's the question. So who's going to do it? Are you really up for it? Because here's your marching orders. And they're ready for you. I want to finish by reading verses 4 through 9. From the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause the people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book, train, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success." Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Seniors, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Underclassmen, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Adults, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Here's the, here's the promise. God will move. God will move. He'll move in this county, in this city. And it's not because of us. He invites us to be a part of it. He helps us see how we can be a part of it, but it's not because of us. See, Moses, Moses wasn't the source of strength and courage for the Israelites. So when Moses died, it wasn't the end. When Moses died, it wasn't the end. And when Joshua would die, did God stop moving? No. Because Joshua wasn't the source of strength and courage either. And as awesome as our seniors are, they're not the source of our strength and courage either. The Spirit of God is our source of strength. And we can be courageous and we can be confident because of the word of God. So when, when the Bible calls us to be strong and courageous, he's not going, hey, reach within yourself and get stronger and get more courageous. What he's saying is become aware of the reality that I am in charge, that I have all power, 
and I have all wisdom, and I have given you my word. And you can trust in my word, and you can trust in my strength. Be strong and courageous, not because you are, but because I am. And you will see God move. You will see God transform the lives of your friends. You'll see God do great things through you and in your life. That's the challenge. So who's, what's next? God's gonna continue to move. That's what's next. Who's gonna be a part of it? That's the question. At this time, I wanna invite the seniors up. If they just come stand up here in the front and kind of face, face the rest of you people. So, so tonight, Sunday we recognized our seniors and we recognized the fact, not that they graduate high school because that's, you get a high school diploma for that, right? Um, but we recognize that these guys and these gals are heading off to school, they're heading off to uh, work, all different kinds of directions. Some are going to Central Texas, some are going to North Texas, some are staying in the Houston area, but... What we know is that we're sending them out as missionaries wherever they go. But tonight, we wanted to make this about what's next. So in just a second, what we're going to do is we're going to do this passing the torch or passing the mantle type ceremony where our seniors are going to come around and they're going to pray over each one of you. So a different senior will be praying over each one of you. Now, uh, last week you guys picked out people. If you just start with your first person and then we'll go from there, okay? Uh, but here, here's the deal. They're gonna get to all you guys. Just what they did is they just picked out different people that they know that they have tried to reach out to you. They've tried to be a part of your life. And so they wanted to make this a special time where they can pray for you as you take the next step tonight. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to take these graduation cords and they're going to place them over your shoulders and then they'll pray for you and then they'll work their way around. So if, if they don't get to you the first round, they're coming to you the next round. Okay. So don't, don't think like you're getting left out because no one likes you or something. Um, and you'll get to keep this as a reminder of tonight where they pass the torch to you guys. So before we take off tonight, a uh, couple things. Uh, I would like to introduce you guys to someone awesome that's going to be hanging out with us this summer. Uh, so Soda will still be around as our intern this summer. But we'll also have another intern this summer. So Ariana, if you come up. <laughs> they already love you, so that's awesome. Uh, so this is Ariana. Say hi, Ariana. Yeah. Awesome. She's going to be hanging out with us this summer, helping out with Wednesday nights, helping out with camp and mission trip and all the fun stuff. Uh, she's a recent grad of, well, actually it was last year, right? Last summer she graduated from Sam Houston State yeah. University. The, the home of the 2021 FCS National Champions. And they did something in golf, right? I think today. I don't know. Anyways, it's not on TV. I can't watch it. So anyways, so we're excited to have Ariana with us this summer. I know she's going to have fun hanging out with you guys and doing some awesome stuff. So hey, say hi to her one more time. Yeah, awesome. All right. Thanks. So she'll be around if you want to keep say hi to her later. And then... For our, if you need to leave, I know it's 7.30, but I know it's our last FC Wednesday night, and it wouldn't be an FC Wednesday night if we didn't have. Uh, 
That's better. There we go. <laughs> so as you know by now, if you, if you haven't been here, here's what you can do. You can scan that QR code. It takes you to a little website where you can type your name in or some initials and then type in your questions, uh, whether it's something we talked about tonight or if it's just a question you have in general about walking with Jesus, uh, please ask that and then I'll get them on my phone and then I can, oh, look, there's already an Ask Michael question. That was super fast. No. All right, uh, someone sent in dating tips for college. <laughs> yeah, it was it was anonymous. Uh, so. So. There's lots of advice I would give. Here, here's what, here, here's the main thing that I would tell you. Focus on your relationship with Christ. Pursue Him with everything that you have. And as you're doing that, if you look around and find somebody running alongside with you, who knows? Okay, is that fair enough? I think sometimes we get so caught up in, I need somebody to fulfill me, that's not true. You, you will put pressure on that person that they'll never be able to, to fulfill. Run and chase after Christ with everything that you have, and while you're running, if you look to your side and you see somebody running next to you, that's the type of person that you're gonna want to date. Okay. Okay, so we had another uh, question about next year. Someone says that they're nervous about stepping up next year and being a leader and uh, just wanted to know what are some ways to start stepping up for the younger students. So stepping into that leadership role and being someone that the younger students can start to look up to. Start. Start. I mean, just, just understand that you are, are growing up and God has, has you in this place for a reason, so you don't need to have, you know, the, we talked about tonight, have strength and courage. That strength and courage doesn't come from you, it comes from God, because he's with you and, he, and you have his word. So that gives you the confidence to walk in that. Start to discover those gifts that God has given you, those spiritual gifts. How can you step into a role that, that has your gifts in mind? If you're good with children, there's a way for you to jump into children's ministry. We'll help you figure that out. If maybe, maybe you feel a calling to share the gospel with other people because you have that gift of evangelism, we can put you to work and we can give you opportunities to use that. But it's the, the worst thing that you can do is know that you have a gift from God, which everybody does, and then keep that to yourself. Why would God give you a gift why would God promise to give you a gift if you're not going to use it for the kingdom? So step into that role. You don't have to do something that's not you. Just because you're a leader doesn't mean you have to get up on stage and sing every week. It means you can help pass out papers. It means you can help share the gospel. It means you can help connect people to our student ministry. There's all kinds of ways. So just start with what you know God has gifted you with. This question, how, how do you love those that you want to hate? I think the biggest way to combat our hate is to constantly be reminded of the grace that we need every single day. When we, when we put ourselves at the foot of the cross and we start to evaluate our own lives and what we've done to God as far as our sin against him and how he has forgiven us, 
There's no way that, to me, there's no way that we could possibly look at that and have hatred towards anybody else. If we look at ourselves and go, we have sinned against a holy God and he has offered up his own son for us so that we can have eternal life. And I didn't deserve any of that. If he can show me that grace and that mercy and that kindness and that love, how can I not forgive anybody for anything that they can do to me that won't affect my eternity? You can hurt me. You can make fun of me. You can do anything you want. Someone could even take my life, but it won't affect my eternity. So how can I then look at that and forgive others? I love you too, Jack. Even though we're not doing a drum battle. What is, here's a question from a senior. What is the best way to further my personal felt relationship with Christ when off at college? Get involved somewhere. Get involved somewhere. Uh, have a list of churches that teach the Bible and that glorify God. And when you get to college, wherever you're going, that first Sunday, set your alarm, wake up, and go to church. If you don't, You'll sit in bed, and guess what? The next week, you'll sit in bed, and the next week, you'll sit in bed, and by the fourth week, by, after a month, you won't even remember that it's Sunday anymore. So the best way that you can continue to grow is get involved in the life of a Bible-teaching, God-glorifying church. Find a college ministry. Don't, don't look for the hype. Don't look for the hype. Look for a solid, biblical based Bible teaching church that praises God and gives him glory. Get involved, find a way to serve. If you're going, if you're going to a college campus, look for a BSM. There you go. Ariana is actually one of the interns at Sam Houston's BSM, so she could tell you about that this summer and how you can get connected with that. Baptist Student Ministry. It's on, they have them on several college campuses, so... And they do life, they do what, what we would have as life groups, but they do small groups, they, they meet and gather for worship, they do activities, they do mission trips during the summer, uh, mission trips during the school year. Uh, so there's ways for you to get involved that way. So get involved somewhere. Uh, let me do a couple more since it's our last Wednesday. Uh, can we have one of the seniors pray us out? Absolutely. This is a good one. I think it's from another one of our seniors. Yes. How do you deal with the pressure of walking the stage and moving on in life? So it's interesting that you're asking this question now because I think a lot of times we don't think of this question until we've walked the stage and then it's the day or two after and we go, oh, life is starting to, to change. Or maybe it doesn't even hit till we get to college. I think the biggest thing to remember is that if we're in Christ, we've been called to a higher mission than going to a school, getting a degree, making money, having a family, getting married, having a family. We've been called to a higher calling than that, and that is to live for Christ and make disciples. So with everything that you do, if you filter it through that perspective of my job in life is to make disciples, then I think it takes the pressure away of trying to compete and trying to earn some sort of success or chase after something else. So yes, you know, invest and do what it takes to, to get to where you feel like God is calling you to do, whatever job or profession that is. But also keep in mind that the main goal in life is to make disciples who make disciples. So that, that can free us from the pressure of trying to live up to some other standard that we create. So that means, I mean, you're going to get to college, you're going to change your mind about your major, you're going to change your mind about a lot of things that, that really don't matter. The big thing is, is that you stay faithful to Christ and follow him and know that your mission is to make disciples. And then everything else will 
fall into place eventually. I'm not saying that your life will be easy, but I'm saying that everything else will make sense. So that can give you the confidence in that pressure to walk the stage knowing, you know, God, God is with me now. I know God and his promises will be with me tomorrow. Cool. All right, that's all I got tonight. Um, can I have a senior pray for us? Kayla? Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's pray. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for um, just this day and this time that we get to just come together and worship you, Lord, and learn more about you. And um, I just thank you for the time that us seniors have gotten to to minister here and here at FC and also just be ministered to and be discipled to, Lord. And I pray that through us that some of these, um, some of the other students in the ministry have been have grown and been discipled by us, Lord. But I just thank you for the ways that they've also discipled us and also ministered to us. And I thank you for the adults who have done the same, God. And I pray that as we, as we leave, um, the students that we're leaving behind, Lord, that you would just grow them into um, young servant leaders, God, that are, that are going to do such great things for you. And I pray that you just help them be bold um, and share the gospel and share your love with literally everyone they meet. Um, and I pray the people that aren't here right now at FC, but that will be coming in, God, that you would just use them um, and help the students that are leaving behind, that we're passing the mantle to, help them minister to them and help them um, be intentional with them. So, Lord, I just thank you for our time here. Um, I pray as we leave that you, again, would just build these other students up, God. And we just we love you so much, and we thank you for our time that we've gotten together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.